Hello, I am Christian Buza, the principal investigator of the Biomining project. In this video, I will summarize the main results of this project. First, I would like to put this project into context. If we consider the volume and variety of data, we can say that biology turned into a data-rich science in the last decades. With this, I mean that giant amount of biomedical data is available from various sources such as DNA sequencing, microarrays or magnetic resonance imaging. Let us consider genetic data first. The advent of next generation sequencing or NGS technology and the rapid decrease of the costs of DNA sequencing led to dramatic growth of the amount and variety of genetic data, including the data stored in publicly available databases. For example, during the four years between 2010 and 2014, the amount of data stored in the sequence read archive increased by three orders of magnitudes resulting in a collection of petabytes of NGS data. Another prominent source of biomedical data describes brain activity. While there are various techniques to capture brain activity, such as electroencephalography, magnetoencephalography, and magnetic resonance imaging, magnetic resonance imaging became popular due to its excellent spatial resolution. Without the need for completeness, let us mention pharmacology datasets that contain interaction between drugs and pharmaceutical targets. In many cases, such datasets may be used directly in order to address biomedical challenges. In other cases, however, advanced analytic techniques are required, including approaches based on data mining and machine learning. In the biomining project, we aimed to develop such algorithms. In particular, we focused on three domains, classification of genetic data, classification of biomedical time series, and link prediction in biomedical networks. Classification is the common denominator of various recognition tasks. Computer-aided diagnosis of various diseases is one of its prominent applications. Before summarizing our contributions in each of these domains, I would like to point out that biomedical datasets are usually high-dimensional and the analysis of such datasets is particularly challenging due to the difficulties known under the umbrella of the so-called course of dimensionality. Some research results even suggest that the notion of distances between instances of a dataset becomes meaningless in high-dimensional spaces. One out of many causes of the dimensionality is the presence of hubs, that is, instances which appear as nearest neighbors of surprisingly many other instances. This phenomenon has been described before the start of the project, and it was addressed by various hubness-aware machine learning techniques. As hubness-aware machine learning techniques work well in case of high-dimensional datasets, from the methodological point of view, we decided to focus on hubness-aware machine learning. This decision is further justified by the fact that, despite their promising results in various domains, hubness-aware machine learning techniques have hardly been used for biomedical tasks before our works. At the beginning of the project, we studied the performance of hubness-aware classifiers in case of label noise. As reliable class labels may be difficult to obtain, this is a particularly relevant situation for the classification of biomedical data. Furthermore, we developed hubness aware regression techniques. Additionally, we studied how to combine hubness aware classifiers with instance selection in order to speed up classification and maintain high accuracy simultaneously. We published these results in various journal papers. As the details are described in the publications, and we also explained most of these techniques in our other videos, in this video, I will only focus on the main contributions of the project. 
In cases when it is difficult to label the instances of the data, semi-supervised machine learning may be used. Therefore, we proposed a semi-supervised extension of a Hubness-aware classifier and applied it to the classification of gene expression data. We called the resulting approach semi-supervised naive Hubness Bayesian K nearest neighbor or SSNHBNN for short. We evaluated SSNHBNN on gene expression data related to the diagnosis of various cancer types such as breast cancer, colon cancer and lung cancer. We also compared the approach with other methods from the literature and showed that SSNHBNN outperforms state-of-the-art classifiers. In the second phase of the project, we focused on the classification of biomedical time series. In particular, we examined how well hubness aware classifiers perform in case of electroencephalograph signals. Furthermore, we developed a projection-based classification technique and applied it to the classification of electroencephalograph signals. We tested the performance of our classifier in various situations such as the recognition of a disease and the recognition of the stimulus. We also examined the robustness of the approach. In order to do that, we trained the classifier on the signals that were obtained from healthy subjects and tested the classifier's performance on signals of persons affected by a disease. Our projection-based approach worked well in this situation as well. Both in case of Hubness-aware classifiers, as well as in case of the projection-based approach, we used dynamic time warping as distance measure between time series. From now on, I will use the abbreviation DTW for dynamic time warping. We examined how well DTW-based models work on functional magnetic resonance imaging data describing brain activity. We performed this research in collaboration with the researchers from the Brain Research Center of the uh, Research Center for Natural Sciences of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, and it turned out that DTW may be a proper measure of functional connectivity between brain regions, that is, DTW may outperform conventional correlation-based functional connectivity in many applications, such as classification of the data according to diseases or other conditions. The resulting models are interpretable by domain experts, they are in accordance with biological research results, and they may give us new insights about how the brain works. Regarding our work related to functional magnetic resonance imaging data describing brain activity, I would like to mention that we tried to detect communities of brain regions together with our collaborators from the Babes Bolyai University in Cluj-Napoca and published the results at the 14th International Conference on Parallel Problem Solving from Nature. One of the most widespread brain diseases is the Parkinson's disease. The so-called UPDRS score can be used to assess how severe is the disease in case of a particular patient. There were previous attempts to estimate UPDRS score from speech data, and if the accuracy was sufficiently high, the estimation of UPDRS scores could be integrated into smartphones and tablets. In principle, while the patient makes telephone or Skype calls, his or her UPDRS score could be estimated and this would allow to monitor the patient's UPDRS score more or less continuously. As neural networks are known to be universal function approximators, and Hubness-aware models haven't been used for this task of UPDRS score estimation previously, we decided to examine the performance of neural networks coupled with Hubness-aware weighting, and we obtained promising results. Another type of simply observable biomedical time series describe the dynamics of typing. The dynamics of typing, or typing patterns for short, 
has been known to be characteristic to persons and it has been proposed for person identification. According to our results, hubness aware models may improve the accuracy of person identification, therefore, they are worth to be considered for this application as well. We also presented a demo at the 28th International Conference on Advanced Information Systems Engineering. In this demo, participants of the conference could register to our demo system and they could try to log in with their keystroke dynamics. Furthermore, we announced an open challenge related to person identification based on keystroke dynamics. In the third phase of the project, we focused on link prediction in biomedical networks. In particular, we considered drug target interaction networks and we aimed to predict new interactions between drugs and pharmaceutical targets. Drug target interaction prediction is one of the most prominent applications of machine learning in the pharmaceutical domain. There are several reasons for this. First of all, more complete knowledge about drug target interactions is expected to contribute to better understanding the pharmacology of drugs. The importance of drug target interaction prediction is also underlined by the fact that it may contribute to the prediction of adverse effects and drug repositioning. With drug repositioning, we mean the usage of an existing, well-established medicine to a new disease, that is, to a disease for which this medicine has not been used before. Why is this so important? Why not simply developing new drugs? Because it takes a long time, it is very expensive and risky to develop new drugs. Let us note that only a few dozens of new drugs are approved by FDA each year and the average costs related to the discovery of a new drug are approximately $1.8 billion and the process takes more than 10 years on average. One of the most prominent drug target interaction prediction techniques is based on bipartite local models or BLMs for short. In case of BLMs, the drug target interaction prediction task is treated as a link prediction problem in a bipartite graph. In our study, we extended bipartite local models. In particular, we used our recent hubness aware regression technique, ECKNN, nearest neighbor regression with error correction, as local model in BLM. Additionally, we proposed an enhanced representation of drugs and targets in a multimodal similarity space. The modalities include external similarities and the similarities calculated based on the new drug target interactions. Furthermore, we built an ensemble by selecting subsets of features from the enhanced similarity based representation of drugs and targets. As we used hubness aware local models in the proposed approach, we refer to it as HLM for simplicity. We performed experiments on publicly available real-world drug target interaction datasets according to standard evaluation protocols. The results show that our approach outperforms state-of-the-art drug target prediction techniques. We examined the effect of hubness-aware error correction and the ensemble size, and we found that both of these techniques that is, hubness of error correction and ensembling, are essential for high accuracy. Furthermore, we showed that HLM is able to predict chemically validated new interactions, and therefore we hope that it will contribute to design, development, and repositioning of drugs. It is interesting to note that the formal definition of the drug target interaction prediction task is quite similar to the formal definition of those tasks that are considered in the recommender systems community. Therefore, recommender systems techniques may motivate drug target interaction prediction methods. In fact, we considered Bayesian personalized ranking, which is one of the most prominent recommender algorithms. We extended it to allow for drug-centric predictions 
that are tailored towards drug repositioning scenarios. We called the resulting approach PRDTI, that is, Bayesian Ranking Prediction of Drug Target Interactions. We made an implementation of hubness aware machine learning techniques publicly available. Our software package, called PyHubs, is the first publicly available Python implementation of hubness aware machine learning techniques. It contains both the implementation of hubness aware classifiers as well as hubness aware regress source developed within the project. In the framework of this project, the principal investigator published six first authored journal papers and three additional co authored journal papers. Further two co authored journal papers are under review. Additionally, four first authored conference papers and further three co-authored conference papers were published. The principal investigator gave an invited talk about hubness aware machine learning at the 9th Japanese Hungarian Symposium on Discrete Mathematics and its Applications. In order to ensure the visibility of the results of the project, key contributions are explained in audio slides as well. These videos are publicly available at YouTube and in several cases, on the web page of the publisher of the journal papers. Besides numerous informal collaborations, four students were officially involved in the project. They contributed to the research, participated at conferences, contributed to the PyHubs software package, and prepared some of the videos. Finally, I would like to thank you for watching this overview about the project's results. I hope that you found some of our works interesting and, therefore, you will perhaps study the details of our work as well. If you are interested, please visit our website under www.biointelligence.hu.